you. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to this city information session on the River Road Santa Clara neighborhood plan and specifically the proposed neighborhood specific code amendments. My name is Terry Harding. I'm the principal planner for community planning and design with the city and I'm serving as the project manager for this phase of the neighborhood plan. With me today are Leah Rausch and Kelly Whitmill, who are both planners with the city. And we have a CAC member, John Belcher, in attendance as well. This information session is being recorded and will be available on the city website shortly. We'll briefly cover where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going with the neighborhood plan and code amendments. And then we'll have time for questions from any live attendees uh, after the fact, questions can be submitted via email or the website. For our Zoom and engagement agreements, please share your questions using the Q&A tool or raise your hand. Please use respectful language and please keep your question or comment concise. So a little bit of background and history on the neighborhood plan. The plan has been underway for about five years and we've been progressing through various phases of work from reaching out, which began in 2017, to a phase of neighborhood visioning, setting neighborhood priorities, and then working with community members on drafting and refining a set of policies across five topic areas. In 2019, the project moved into the action planning phase and in 2022, after some delays due to the pandemic and other challenges, we are have moved into the adoption phase. Throughout the project, many groups have helped guide the community outreach and the creation of content in the plan. The Community Advisory Committee is a group of 11 community members nominated by the River Road and Santa Clara community organizations and appointed by the Planning Commission. They play a key role advising on the project and wrote the vision statements, goals, policies, and actions. Arco and SACO have been communicating with their neighbors, hosting events and volunteering over many, many years. Working groups for each topic area vetted and refined the goals, policies, and actions, and the general public has been invited to participate and give feedback at each milestone at a community meeting. City of Eugene, Lane County uh, staff are collaborating to staff the project across multiple departments. And the special districts, of which there are many, are providing coordination and giving feedback. Here are some of the events and activities the project team has undertaken over the last five years. There have been literally thousands of hours of volunteer time, so I'd like to take a moment to thank our volunteers. Where are we now? The plan adoption package consists of three components. There's the neighborhood plan itself, which will serve as an adopted land use plan and I'll talk about what that means. There's the action plan, which is a catalog of actions developed by the community, which will be implemented over time. And this set of code amendments, which implement policies and actions at the same time as plan adoption. Adoption of the River Road Santa Clara Neighborhood Plan will provide policy direction to guide plan implementation. The neighborhood plan will serve as an adopted land use plan, which implements statewide planning goals and guidelines at the local level. The plan focuses on economic development, transportation, parks and natural resources, land use, and community. Each topic area includes a vision statement, goals, and policies. I apologize for the noise outside my window. The neighborhood plan will replace the current River Road Santa Clara Urban Facilities Plan, which was adopted in 1987. 
The action plan includes community identified actions that are possible strategies to implement the adopted policies in the neighborhood plan. The action plan is not a formally adopted land use plan. Rather, it will guide implementation of the neighborhood plan incrementally over the long term and will require continued coordination between the city, county, River and Santa Clara communities, and other community partners, as well as advocacy for additional resources. And now the main topic for today, the draft neighborhood specific code amendments. This set of proposals changes and amends the C2 community commercial zone and the R1 low density residential zone within the neighborhood boundaries to incorporate the most critical items originally included in the draft river road corridor code and have been important to neighborhood uh, folks in the neighborhoods over the course of the project. The code amendments include building height limitations, prohibiting or limiting certain auto oriented uses and adding transition standards between commercial and residential zones for C2 zoned properties and expanding small scale collective farm sales opportunities throughout the neighborhoods in the R1 zone. The purpose statements on this slide show that the intent of the code amendments are to implement important policies, as I mentioned, to promote walkable neighborhoods through adding pedestrian friendly building design standards and to support a shift to less auto oriented land uses in alignment with our citywide climate and transportation goals. The next series of slides here illustrate some of these code amendments and they're all available on our website. In the C2 zone currently, the maximum building height is 120 feet. This proposal lowers that maximum building height to 60 feet for properties that are zoned C2 within the boundaries of River Road and Santa Clara. Additionally, within 50 feet of an R1 zone, the maximum height for that building is 30 feet, the same as that adjoining R1 zone. These next slides illustrate ways to accomplish a transition between a commercial zone building and a residential zone building. And I'll just flip through them, but there are various combinations of setback, walls, fences, and landscaping that are available for a property owner to choose from. All of these graphics are available on the project website and are labeled with the section of the code that they would be implementing. As I mentioned, the code amendments do add design standards for community commercial properties and those include standards around building orientation and building facade, building walls and window coverage, uh, and weather protection. In terms of prohibiting auto-oriented uses, the code amendments would prohibit new uses that are motor vehicle, boat, RV sales and service uses, and also commercial storage facilities. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about um, questions we've gotten about that one in just a moment. Uh, the R1 code amendment will increase the flexibility for people who want to sell produce or farm products in the residential areas. So in our code that will say allow the display and sale of agricultural products grown off-site, allowing several uh, farmers to come together to sell their produce um, at one location. Uh, I did mention that a number of delays and challenges have affected the project. In particular, since 2020, a host of new state regulations have been passed down to the city of Eugene to implement. And those include climate friendly and equitable communities rules, uh, middle housing rules, and some new rules having to do with uh, removing barriers to the production of housing. Uh, we have spent the last couple of years adapting the plan 
to make sure that what gets adopted will be consistent with the new state requirements. Uh, it is important to note that the visions, goals, and policies remain largely intact after the five years of community work, but some aspects needed to shift in terms of how we were treating um, code and zoning. Our code tools are responding to an evolving state landscape that is focusing on addressing the housing crisis and moving towards more equitable outcomes. What's next in the adoption process? This phase, uh, late spring 2023, we are seeking community feedback, actually just concluded a phase of asking for community feedback to inform the summer work which we're just going into. This summer, the Community Advisory Committee and community organizations will be forming their recommendations of, about the draft plan and code amendments. Once that is complete, those recommendations will be passed on to the city and county planning commissions who will hold hearings, public hearings, and make recommendations to their elected bodies. And then in the winter, the City Council and the Board of County Commissioners will hear the proposals, hold their own public hearing, and deliberate and take action. At each phase, there is opportunity for members of the public to submit their comments, and all of the details for that is on the project website. This summarizes what I was just going over. Uh, here in July, we're working with the community organizations on their recommendations. Uh, I didn't talk about this step, but staff does plan to revise the plan and code amendments based on the feedback and recommendations that we hear, and then send that revised package out to the planning commissions in the fall. To provide your comments, you can submit testimony via email to rrscplan at eugene-or.gov and all of that public testimony will be shared with Eugene and Lane County Planning Commissions, the Eugene City Council and Lane County Board of Commissioners and staff is always available to answer questions as well. So I do want to touch on a couple of questions that we've received via email. A letter was sent uh, about a couple weeks ago to owners of C2 property because there are some proposed limitations in the code amendments that affect those properties. So these are some of the questions that we received. Number one, can I continue to operate my business if my use is removed from the code's list of allowed uses? And this is where Kelly might um, pop in if you have something to add, Kelly. The answer to that one is yes. Number two, can my use be expanded in the future if it's removed from the allowed use list? And the answer to that one is no. Uh, and there's a link down here to the code section that talks about non-conforming uses and the standards around what you can and can't do if your use is no longer allowed. Question number three, can I vest a proposed use by submitting a site review or other land use application? And that is a yes. Um, the answer to that one was provided by our land use staff and we can provide more details to folks who have questions um, that relate to a particular property or proposal. That's the end. I think I'll stop sharing and see if we have any questions. I don't see any, oh, John has his hand raised. Go ahead, John. Of course. Um, could you tell me a little more about vesting the use? How does that work and what is made possible? Sure. So this, the question that we got via email was about site review. And so the question was, if there's a use allowed in the code right now and it requires site review, um, and it's a, it's a lengthy hypothetical question, but and that use is also on the list of uses that's proposed to go away. 
is it possible to submit a land use application, a site review application to vest the right to build that use? Um, and it does vary case by case. Um, the answer to this one was provided by our land use team. Um, but the answer is that yes, that's possible and actually fairly common when uses are proposed to be removed from a land use code. Uh, property owners do have the ability to submit that to vest an application before the code amendments take effect. And are the uses we're proposing to remove, are they all vestible? Create a new adjective? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll probably need to follow up on that one. Uh, but I think it's just uses that require site review in the code or properties that have a site review overlay on them. Um, but yeah, I don't think there are any uses that wouldn't qualify for that. Kelly, please correct me if, if that's not right or not your understanding. That would be my understanding as well. Okay. Okay. Final part of that question is we still have that nodal overlay in the area adjacent to um, Chambers Overpass. Would that preclude them from vesting the use? Um, I think I could speak to that, Terry. Yeah, go ahead. So yes, if a use um, was already not allowed by the nodal development, then it they could not, if they were in the nodal development overlay, could not move forward with a site review for a use that wasn't allowed in that area. Okay, so it's, it's a, a pre-non-use. Got it. <laughs> yeah, there are already some uses that are not allowed. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Well, we will continue to ask for questions and we'll get this recording up on the website, share it around, and look forward to continuing to answer questions that come in. Thank you. Thanks for letting me attend. Of course.